You're listening to The Doctor Is In Podcast. This is the show where you get the best tips, tricks, and nutritional hacks to help you and your family get healthier. You'll also hear what works and what doesn't work so you don't have to waste your time and money. All right, let's get started. Hello, I'm Dr. Tony Martin Jr., and this is The Doctor Is In Podcast, and this is episode 110. Now, I'm on my own today. My dad's currently off on holidays, and he'll be back again in the next episode. So today what I want to do is I want to talk about something that we see in the clinic every day, and that is leaky gut syndrome. My dad and I, on a future episode, we're going to talk a lot more about leaky gut. We're going to talk a lot about the symptoms. We're going to break it down uh, real nice for everyone just to get an understanding of what we see in our clinic. But what I want to do today is I want to talk specifically about some surprising causes of leaky gut because, you know, one of the things with leaky gut specifically is, you know, when you say to somebody, hey, you know what, you got leaky gut, what usually happens is like, well, you know, it's funny, I have no digestive symptoms at all. My gut's fine. I don't have any digestive symptoms. I don't have any bloating. Uh, You know, my bowels are normal. I have no pain. I have no discomfort. So how can I have a gut condition if I don't have any gut symptoms? And And that's a great question. The thing is this, leaky gut can cause a whole bunch of different things in people. Now, some people with leaky gut will end up with digestive symptoms. They will end up with IBS. They will end up with a whole bunch of different types of digestive problems. But there's a whole lot of people who have leaky gut syndrome and don't have any digestive symptoms whatsoever. And it's important to understand that because there is a direct connection. Now, research has shown different connections between the gut and different organs. For example, there's what they call the gut joint axis. Look that up. You'll see that there's a direct connection between your gut and your joints. Think about the implications of stuff like rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis uh, pain in general. So some people with leaky gut, the only symptom they may have might be joint pain. There's also what they call the gut skin axis. There's a lot of skin conditions out there such as psoriasis, eczema, all those kind of things that may be due to leaky gut. So the only symptom that that person has may be a skin issue. They may not have a joint problem. They may not have any kind of digestive symptoms whatsoever. There's also a gut-lung connection. There's a gut-brain axis. Think about that for a second. There are a lot more ways to have leaky gut symptoms than having digestive symptoms with leaky gut. And that's the first thing I want to just kind of bring to your attention. So if you suspect that you have leaky gut, but you're like, hey, I have no digestive symptoms, that doesn't necessarily really matter because a majority of the people with leaky gut have no digestive symptoms whatsoever. So that's the first thing that I want to just kind of bring to your attention. Now, leaky gut is interesting. And the reason for that is, you know, we get asked all the time, well, what exactly is leaky gut? To keep it short, essentially what happens, if you think of everything that you eat and it gets broken down, it gets digested, it makes its way through your stomach, through your bowels, and eventually those that food is broken down into just tiny little nutrients, things that should cross the lining of the gut into the bloodstream, and then the blood can then take it wherever it needs to go. And that is how a normal, healthy, functioning bowel works. However... What ends up happening, it's usually because of a change in bacteria content of the gut or chronic inflammation of the gut. What ends up happening is that lining, the thing that's supposed to stop bad stuff from getting into the bloodstream, stuff like you know viruses, bacteria, fungus, undigested food, that's supposed to be stopped. That, that lining gets destroyed and it allows those things to get in there. And that's where the term leaky gut comes from because the gut is literally leaking into the bloodstream. And this, as I mentioned, can cause a bunch of issues. It can cause joint pain in people. It can cause brain issues. It, you know, We always use this term in our clinic, leaky gut, leaky brain. There's real implication to your for your brain if you have a problem with your gut. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong once you have leaky gut syndrome. And again, in a future episode, we're going to break that down even more. Now, how do you get leaky gut? Because as I mentioned, leaky gut 
just doesn't show up spontaneously. It doesn't work that way. There's a there's a cause and effect. So what is the cause of leaky gut? Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because over the last few weeks, I've been reading some very interesting studies that you know have really caught my attention. And the first one that you know I want to just kind of bring, just discuss a little bit, has to actually do with a study, and it's actually you know quite interesting. Is they found that the uh, microbiome, so the actual content of the gut bacteria, is the same in a 90-year-old as it is in a 30-year-old. But specifically, you know, those ridiculously healthy 90-year-olds, those really old people that are very healthy, they have the same gut microbiome as a healthy 30-year-old. A study looked into that. So they, they even checked people up to 100 years old, and they found that the content of their gut was the same as a healthy 30-year-old. And one of the things that happens as we age, you know, aside from the fact that our organs, as we've mentioned on previous podcasts, become more insulin resistant, one of the things that happens as we age specifically is our gut bacteria changes. And what they found is that if somebody is ridiculously healthy as they age, it stays the same as somebody in their 30s, which tells you that there's a lot to be said about the health of the gut and longevity. If your gut isn't healthy, the chances of living long are just not there. So that's that study caught my uh, attention. We've we know that we've seen that, but it's interesting when you come across these studies that kind of just again show the importance that your gut health has on healthy aging. A lot of people spend a ton of money on anti aging you know, stuff that you can visibly see because we put a lot of emphasis when it comes to aging on stuff that we can see, our skin, our hair, our nails, stuff like that. However, real anti-aging starts from the inside out. If you want healthy skin because your skin and your gut is tied directly, then you need a healthy gut. So if you want to age healthier, if you want to look younger as you age, it's very important that your gut is healthy as well. So I saw that study and then I, you know, I said, okay, so if you want to talk anti-aging and you want to talk about gut health, what are some things that can cause leaky gut in the average person? Now, we know, you know, we talk about this a lot. We talk about this in newsletters. We talk about this in, uh, you know, previous episodes of podcasts. Antibiotics were a tremendous discovery, saved a lot, a lot of lives. However, the misuse of antibiotics has also caused a lot of problems. And you're starting to see that more and more today with all the these super bugs. Even we talked about this in a previous episode not long ago, how it seems as if antibiotics almost leaves a little bit of a toxin behind after you're done, which is why you definitely want to be taking probiotics. Okay, so we know that. We know that antibiotics will kill your good bacteria. Uh, and, and that's a you know, my dad says this all the time, you know, five days of antibiotics will basically wipe out all your good bacteria for the most part. So you have to replenish that. We we know that. We know about antibiotics. But I want to share with you some surprising causes of why leaky gut is really an epidemic, why it's so common. And if you are not well in any way, then there's a good chance that you have leaky gut because it really is one of the first things that happens as you move from health towards the seas. It really is one of those first things that happens. So, all right, so let's talk about a few interesting things that I saw that may surprise you when it comes to the causes of leaky gut. Well, first of all, this actually was another study, and we know this uh, as well, but it's interesting. A new study that was just published back in October of 2017 basically uh, said this, that stress might just be as unhealthy as junk food to your digestive system. Specifically, stress will change your microbiome. It will affect your gut bacteria. So think about that for a second. We know that under chronic stress, you have elevated cortisol. Cortisol leads to inflammation, and inflammation will irritate the gut, which will lead to leaky gut. But we also know that high stress will cause a change in the microbiome directly. Are there a lot of people stressed today? Absolutely. Is stress... Uh, something that the typical person has in their life now? Yes, absolutely. So stress 
alone is a big reason why there are so many people who have leaky gut syndrome today. Now, what's also interesting about stress, and we talked about this uh, in a previous episode, is that because a stressed person has chronically elevated levels of cortisol, they also will have elevated levels of insulin. Now, why is that? Well, one of the main jobs of cortisol is to raise your blood sugar levels. Now, you can't have chronically high blood sugar levels, so your body will then make insulin to counter that. And if you go back to uh, episode 100, we talked about that deadly triad of disease, right? That thing that's found in all the major killers, things like heart, Alzheimer's, stroke, diabetes, cancer. You know, we kind of reverse engineered those things. We went back to inflammation and how inflammation, again, just doesn't show up on its own. So you go back a little bit more, you reverse engineer that, and we have this deadly triad that we call, uh, you know, the deadly triad of all diseases. And you're talking about insulin, you know, high insulin. High circulating insulin is a major cause of inflammation, which then leads to a lot of big time problems. Leaky gut was also in that deadly triad of disease. And so is free radical damage. All those three can cause inflammation, which can then lead to the major killers. But the point is this. Not only can chronic stress affect your microbiome, it will raise your insulin levels, which will lead to inflammation, which will lead to other diseases as well. So you can really see the effect that happens once a person becomes stressed. Stress has got to be one of the biggest reasons why people start on that road from health to disease. We talk about this a lot. You know, you don't go to bed healthy today and you wake up disease tomorrow. It's a long process. And there are steps along the way. And one of those steps is leaky gut. Another one of those steps is high circulating insulin. But they're tied in a lot of times. They go hand in hand. A lot of people that have high circulating insulin also have leaky gut because of the inflammation involved. They pretty much go hand in hand. It's very difficult to separate the two, and they both have to be addressed when somebody is not well. That's one of the important things. All right, so stress is a big reason why there are many people today that have leaky gut, specifically. Again, they they may not have taken antibiotics, but they're under stress, and their digestive system has changed. It's inflamed, and now they have leaky gut syndrome. So that's the first thing. Now, another one that really caught my attention and this is something that is, uh, it, it's not surprising because these two things have been linked in the past to bowel cancer. So we already knew that they had an impact on the bowels. But I want to talk about uh, specifically uh, emulsifiers. Now, a study, you know, a recent study showed that two emulsifiers specifically, and, and there's two that I want to talk about because this is what the study talked about was uh, polysorbate 80, and the other one, which is uh, shortened as CMC, is carboxymethylcellulose, which again is just CMC. Those two emulsifiers have been shown to change the microbiome specifically and also cause low-grade inflammation, and I'll talk about that in one second. But first, let's just talk about these two emulsifiers. Now, first of all, what is an emulsifier? Uh, you know, we get this question asked as well. Now, the basic way of describing an emulsifier is that it, an emulsifier basically mixes two things that on their own are not capable of binding together. For example, oil and water, oil and vinegar. So you have two substances that just do not mix. Uh, if you were to take a, a glass, pour some oil in it, and then throw some water, uh, they would be separated. And then you can emulsify it quickly by simply stirring that, right? It'll mix it together. But what happens is that after a short amount of time, those two things will separate again. A lot of foods, they're a combination of uh, oil and vinegar, oil and water, and they won't uh, stick together. So you need an emulsifier in that food to kind of mix those two. So an emulsifier basically uh, contains one Uh, what they call water-loving molecule and one fat-loving molecule. So they bind those two together and they allow them to stay mixed. So emulsifiers are found in stuff like ice creams, uh, margarines, a lot of breads. Uh, A lot of foods really have emulsifiers. And a lot of foods, 
will have uh, CMC. Uh, if you go look it up, it's amazing how many foods have the emulsifier CMC or how many have polysorbate 80 specifically. Now, like I mentioned, research has shown that those two emulsifiers absolutely can lead to low-grade inflammation and they can change the gut health, specifically your gut microbiome. So think about that for a second. A lot of the foods that you're eating, even if you don't have an allergy to them, even if they don't trigger an allergic response or an inflammatory reaction, a lot of foods that contain these emulsifiers can absolutely cause leaky gut, which will then put you on a path towards disease. Or if you have joint pain because of leaky gut and you're like, man, I'm not sure you know, what's going on, there's a chance it might be some of these emulsifiers in the foods that you're eating. It's also a chance that it might be the stress that you're under that's causing the gut to inflame, causing, uh, again, those symptoms. So that's why leaky gut is so prominent. So the first thing we talked about was stress. The second thing I talked about were these emulsifiers, specifically polysorbate 80 and CMC that are found in so many foods, again, that will cause low-grade inflammation, uh, and they will cause uh, also not only inflammation, but they will cause a change in the gut microbiome. Now, another common one are pesticides. You know, pesticides are in our foods. They show up everywhere. A lot of studies have shown, for example, when they check the urine of people that they have these chemicals, they have these pesticides in their urine. It's very common. Well, pesticides kill good bacteria, they kill good bacteria. In fact, studies have also shown that they also kill the good oral bacteria. So, you know, your your whole body is covered with good bacteria and it plays a big part in our immune system. Your, your oral cavity has a lot of good bacteria in it that plays a big part as well in your immune system uh, and digestion, a whole bunch of different things. Pesticides kill those. They kill the stuff in your gut. So you can imagine, not only are we eating foods with certain emulsifiers that will cause uh, inflammation or gut irritation, we also are consuming foods that are full of pesticides. A lot of chemicals that we come into contact with every day will also kill our good bacteria. So what you can see, and I hope you're starting to understand, that it's very likely that a majority of people have the beginnings or full-blown leaky gut. They got gut irritation, they got gut inflammation, and they may be getting digestive symptoms as a result of it, but they may not be. And just because they don't have digestive symptoms doesn't mean that they don't have leaky gut. So again, we talked about stress, we talked about emulsifiers, we looked at uh, pesticides uh, specifically. Now, why, you know, why am I talking about uh, leaky gut today specifically? Well, it has to do with the fact that I came across another study that uh, I found in, you know, very interesting. And it, the title of the, the press release was this, Inflammation in Midlife Tied to Brain Shrinkage Later in Life. Now, what's a major problem that, you know, we are faced with today? It's Alzheimer's. It's dementia. You know, the reality is a lot of people, their body will outlast their brain. Their brain will break down faster than their body will. And they're going to end up with dementia. They're going to end up with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, you know, any one of those neurological issues that really are an epidemic today. And what we're starting to see more and more, and we're starting to understand more and more is that the brain shrinks as we age and that's normal. It becomes a problem when it shrinks too fast. If it's shrinking faster than it should, we want our brains to stay bigger for longer. Now, this study showed that inflammation in your 50s, so midlife, inflammation in your 50s can cause your brain to shrink later in life faster. So think about that for a second. It used to be that things like smoking, we knew smoking would shrink your brain. We knew that obesity was tied to smaller brains, and they didn't know why. Now we know it's because of the high circulating insulin. We also know that just generic, chronic inflammation in your 50s can lead to a smaller brain, which puts you at a much higher risk of dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, those type of things. And what we're just, you know, what I talked about earlier in this episode 
about gut inflammation is a serious problem. There are a lot of people that have low-grade gut inflammation because of stress, because of emulsifiers, because of pesticides, and that inflammation in your 40s, in your 50s, can also cause dementia when you're older. So think about that. There's no no wonder why we have such an epidemic of, de- of dementia or such an epidemic of Alzheimer's. It's because of things like this, things that are 10 steps away removed from dementia they don't you know when somebody has dementia you don't think well they had gut inflammation in their 50s or they had gut inflammation in their 40s or they had high circulating insulin for a long time those are not the things that we think about but those very things can directly result in inflammation which over a period of time will cause your brain to shrink so i want you to think about that for a little bit and think about the importance so what when we talk about leaky gut and we talk about it a lot we write about it a lot in our newsletters and the reason for that is cuz we understand that even though it may not seem like a big deal right now it can end up being quite a big deal later in life i want to encourage you if you're listening to this take your gut health seriously and even though you may not have traditional digestive symptoms you may have skin problems. You may have joint problems. You know, there's a whole other bunch of stuff that you may have that is directly tied into your gut. But if you do have digestive symptoms, if you have digestive symptoms, then you have gut irritation. You have gut inflammation. So think about the effect that that can have later in life, not only the problems that are given you right now. So it's imperative. It's so important that you fix your gut. So in alternative medicine, in functional healthcare like we do, that's why we talk about the gut a lot. That's why we put a lot of importance on gut health. I hope you understand why we get excited, which seems so weird to get excited about gut health, but we absolutely do get excited when we talk about gut health. So I want to thank you for listening to this episode and putting up with me by myself. Uh, it, it, it's actually very difficult to do a podcast on your own because it's nice to be able to look over at somebody else and then they can just take over for a bit. But anyways, I want to thank you for uh, joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us at info at martinclinic.com. Also, if you're not a newsletter subscriber, head over to our website, martinclinic.com, and just sign up. We talk about a lot of these things uh, a few times a week in our uh, newsletters. You know, we read a lot of studies. We break them down. We try to keep things as simple as possible uh, so that we can share as much information that way. And then finally, if you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, if you can leave us a review, that'd be uh, awesome. We'd be very thankful. That helps uh, us get the word out of this podcast. Uh, We really think that the information we provide is valuable and can help a lot of people. So we want as many people listening to this as possible. Again, thank you for listening and have a great day.